Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I'm apologize in advance, especially if you're a first time viewer, you're gonna think, what's wrong with this audio? Um, I actually flew in um, from out of town, forgot my microphone, unfortunately. So I'm gonna be reviewing this the best way I can with the GoPro mic. So hopefully that it um, does a pretty good job. But this is a 2021 BMW X7. Um, it has, this is the X-Drive 40i. Um, it's got the M Sport package, you can see, which M Sport gives it that more of a sportier look. Um, you lose a lot of that the aluminum trim in place of now you get the black accents. Um, I think the M Sport is the way to go. And like, you know, I said, it, either one is fine, but I think this is just looks the most aggressive in this, um, the styling here. I would say this is a more pronounced uh, rope presence, especially when you look at it from this view. It just, it just really just sort of has a commanding look. Even when you drive it, it gives you that, that dominant uh, feel. It has a, um, it's a little bit masculine, but I can see it definitely being, you know, a car for, you know, all types. First impressions when I first jumped into it, it is truly the seven series of SUVs. It is massive. I mean, look how long that rear door is. It is, it is huge. Um, you do have these 22 inch wheels and it has the M Sport brake calipers. They're in black. Um, you can order them in blue and I would think red. I'm not too sure about the red, but I know blue you can get them in the, that color as well. Um, the cool thing about the X7 is it comes with a two axle air suspension standard. So right now it's sitting in its normal height. You do have another setting that's lower for sport mode. You do have another setting for which is your sort of think of it like your um, entry and exit mode is if you have someone like for example my wife is short um, the lower mode would help her getting in and out of the car um, loading things in and out of the car would help and just like typical BMW X5 fashion they also give you the split tailgate so uh, let's see that now so I go ahead and open the tailgate actually, I should need the key with me let's get that obviously you get your, your BMW key with the M Sport, you get the M tricolors on here. Um, lock, lock, mirrors fold, you can unlock. Got your panic button, hatch. And of course, like I said, the touch sensitive. Then of course too, you can do a remote start. I don't know if it's even activated on this one, but you can do a remote start by pressing this three times in a row. And also if you uh, have the app, you can remote start by activating the climate setting. You open the hatch. With M Sport, you get the black exhaust tips. Um, this one does have a towing package, which is an option. You get a, I want to say this is a class three hitch, maybe class three, class four, can't tell. Um, really can't tell with these things, but if you order it with the hitch, um, it's a two inch receiver. Um, you have your two ports. You got your four pin and your seven-way harness. So that's something that would um, be nice to have. Looks like someone nicked that right there. Um, but yeah, you do have those options as well. Obviously, parking sensors. We can go in here. All right. So you have the option to have the suspension deflate itself and lower itself to the lowest level. Um, so hit this now, it will go ahead and drop itself to the lowest setting. All right. Then I can open the tailgate, it's power tailgate, pad it too. It's nice if you need to sit on it, things like that. All right. So you see here, I got the stroller back here. I'm gonna set that off to the side for now. And then this umbrella. All right. So it's got a max setting. So hit this, it's gonna drop all the seats down. You can see the front seat moves up as it pulls the seats down. You can see that 
I just press and hold that. I gotta press and hold it the whole time. And it moves all the seats flat. All this cargo room. I'm gonna put that in, into the description how much cargo room there is. It's a lot. They don't go completely flat, but it goes good enough to load something in here. Definitely a, a 65 inch TV to fit back here just fine. All right, now can I, bring, can I bring them back up power? There's max cargo. Now let's see max, at the max position for this part. Yes, yeah, so I can bring up both third, the second row and the third row up. I'm gonna keep holding it, and you can see second and third row come up. And as a position to seats, it moves the front seats out the way so the headrests don't bump into uh, the front seats. So now if I just want to drop the second, the third row, hit these two. If I even I close this one, I close the tailgate individually, I can close the hatch. If I close the hatch, the tailgate will shut itself. Possibilities in this is endless. This is one large uh, check-in suitcase. This is a medium check-in suitcase. And I have a stroller up here. If, for example, I wanted, needed to use a third row, the third row would be up, and these two suitcases should fit. You know what? Actually, they won't fit. Because the third row is going to be right here at this line. So maybe... One of the large suitcases turned up on the side, or maybe a couple of these. But uh, yeah, a lot of room in here. You can do it. I think with the third row, you're gonna be limited. Most like most SUVs, even something of this size, um, you still only are accommodating that from here to here as far as space wise. So, so then here we are with with you know, I'm assuming the third row will be up. You have this, but again, um, limited as far as cargo room. But then you also have option if you're gonna do that. Get a rooftop box, mount it, go from there. Because really, I don't really there's not many SUVs out there who can offer a lot of different space. Uh, unless we get to like a, the extended wheel base Escalade or um, Yukon XL or something like that, where it's gonna have that extra extra room even when you get the third row up. 91 octane is recommended. 89 is a uh, minimum you can put in here. Here it is, all seats in place. And the cargo room. Let's see what's back here. Oh, there's a cargo cover right there. So you get the smart key access. You lock the car from here. Both doors have it. And then when you grab the inside of the door handle, it unlocks. Soft close doors. Same thing here. Soft close. Then I can lock and I can unlock. So if I need to put the kids in first, guess what? I can grab this door handle, open this door. All right, so I'm gonna start the back seat first. Let's look at this. You got two options. You can do your typical, does it one, two, six. Uh, I guess many seats are in the back, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's a seven seater probably the yeah It's a seven seater. You got the two in the back that that three So two in the back and you have you can do an option where you get captain seats where you can do just make it a six seater um, If I were to do this, I probably spec as a six seater You have your door control. So here you can do the sunshade so the rear passenger can control the sunshade here for the sunroof they also can control their um, sunshade for the window so actually i think this is opens the sunroof i just checked this out let me get in the back seat later on in the video oh well there you go i just hit this button 
This button lowered that sunshade. This one raised that sunshade. All right. So it's like privacy shades here. It's cool. And also these can be activated from the front um, driver area as well. So this must be for center of which your car is not on. Um, you do have power seats in the rear. Like I said, this is your, your, your seven series of SUVs, so I would not expect anything less than this. Uh, you have running board, step in if you need to, and then you have illuminated um, M logos for um, the door seal. Now, if someone needs to jump in the back seat, for example, you got this button here, which would then, takes a second, it boots the front seat up first. It's a process, but it happens. Don't worry, be patient. Then the rear seat passenger can climb in, pull the seat up. And it's all done electronically. There you go. So I'm gonna jump in here. And I'm gonna turn the car on before I completely do that. Okay, now if I'm a third row passenger, I jumped into the rear. What's next here? How do I get the seat back? I guess this, I'm just, this is my first time, so you're laying with me. I'm looking around, I don't see anything. Let me hit that button again on the side of the seat, which should be here. Let me hit the back one, and here comes the seat. I just hope it doesn't crush me back here. Oh boy, here it comes. Okay. I'm five foot eight, in, eight inches. All right, and this is me sitting back here. Um, I could do maybe a couple hours, a couple hours max for me. I just, I feel a little bit claustrophobic in a sense because this seat is so high up for me. Um, if you see here, I'm just sitting back in here and I'm, I'm just sitting here like, okay, now I, have, I have a window. I, okay, cup holders here. Um, I do have a sunroof here. And let's check this out. So you see my knees, they're not touching. The seat is back, not back that far. It stopped at a decent location. You can see here in the front room that there's room and I'm gonna jump in the front, this second row so you can see how much room there is. Um, but I do have a sunroof. There's a glass. I don't know if it's open. It's probably not. But uh, yeah, you have your own climate control. I have my own heated seat back here. So each person in here has his own outboard heated seat. Um, honestly, it, it is. So I would say this is a five zone climate control back in this total car. Over here, you have a light, reading light. And if I want, if this shade is too much, it's like I can shut it just like that. There you go. So now I have added, um, and immediately I can tell it cooled down just from that shade because it is hot outside. It's this. Here is, looks like a tie down and USB C port. So, car goes tie down USB C port back here. So, I had to have, if, I was, if you know, you have a smaller child or, you know, small teen or something like that, I think they'll be fine with this a cup holder tablet or something like that. I don't know, I guess I don't know how you do in a longer trip like this because there is a little bit of that claustrophobia, but I think that's from any SUV with their row. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, there is an air vent, let me open those. Um, so there's airflow. Like I said, then you, you can do that, which gives it more of a spacious look in here. So to get out, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna press this. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. There it goes. Thought I was stuck in here for a second. <laughs> like how I'm gonna open the door and get out. Ooh. All right. Okay. Hold this door handle. And now I'm here. Running board does help because it's a nice little step to get down so I'm not just stepping directly on the ground. So I have that. Um, dude, from, from this angle coming out of that rear third row, 
you do need to be somewhat of a um, yoga. That's a, that's a bit of a stretch. So I think someone that's uh, have mobility issues, maybe I wouldn't want to put them back here. Okay. Wait for this process to happen again. Okay, jump into the second room. All right. Okay, right away, I'll tell you something. This pillow right here, it feels nice. Man, it feels nice. And then let me see if I can, now I'm sitting where it was in the third row where I had sitting in that position. But let's see what it looks like here in this position here. And I have plenty of, of leg room. I have a USB-C port. Obviously, there's a place you can attach devices. Um, obviously, roll the window down, raise it up. But let's see what this does. Okay, so I can control the sunshade here independent of what the driver does. So the driver, I don't know if they can override that. I have to check the settings and see. But the rear passenger can shut that if they want. And of course, you can stop it anywhere you want it. So I can say, you know what, I want to stop it right there. And that, that, that'd be a good halfway point. Maybe the driver says, okay, you know, agree we can share it you know you can close your side or whatnot or um, if you have a child in the back and the sun's glaring and you want to still have something so I can shut that here and then I think this button I wonder if it opens the center let's try it out no okay so this button controls the third row interesting okay so here in the second row, no exceptions here. You got obviously USB-C port here, two USB-C ports here, 12 volt outlet socket right there, no pocket in here. You got two um, individual climate controls. So then also individual heated seats. So each outboard passenger can get his own heated seat. Air vent here. Okay, one air vent back here. All right, nothing on top. You have reading light and then a dome light. So one's a dome, one's a reading. Look how much space. From here, look at the driver's seat. His headrest is up. But look how much space there is. For someone that's tall and has to drive this, they would have no issues driving this. All right, now let's see how much leg room I can say like there's nobody in the third row and I wanna stretch out. So let's pull this back. It's power operated. I'm gonna go as back as far as I can. Okay, as far as it goes. I want to recline as far as it reclines. This would be something that I could definitely. Yeah, let me see if I get an armrest. There you go. This is nice. Now for a road trip, yes, this 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 would be comfortable. I mean, look how I mean I have all this room. My feet are stretched out. Like I said, I'm getting a five foot eight. Um, I mean, I would like to see a little bit more recline, um, but this is obviously not the captain seats. I wonder if the captain seats does more, but this would be, man, this would be something that, you know, as, as a child, you know, younger, my parents had something like this. This would be nice something to have, you know? Um, I think there is a, a way you can get some entertainment. I think from this view, I would like a screen. I think this, I believe it is an option. You can do for entertainment. I know BMW is going away for that for the newer cars because they're, they're seeing it as something that people don't order very much. Obviously with things of having tablets and smartphones, um, I can see why that's not a thing, but I wish BMW would still offer it for those who want it. Um, yeah, two cup holders back here. Okay. And then storage right here. Not touching car seats, easy access to the latch. And obviously a car seat I mean there'd, there'd be no room there'd be no reason why a car seat couldn't fit back here all right coming out of this one all right so here I'm gonna show you a couple things here you have obviously the sun shades for the rear um, so hitting this Raise and lowers both sides of the sun shades. Uh, power windows, power mirrors. These are power 40 mirrors as well. Um, these mirrors also have blind spot monitor. Um, nothing that you expect for cars caliber. Um, power open hatch tailgate. 
area. Um, you see this number two, this number two, for example, say for example, I need to move this passenger seat up. Instead of reaching all the way across, I can just activate this, then use my own seat control on my side, and I can raise, move the seat forward and back. And you probably ask, why is that handy? What if I need to put something back there? What if I'm the driver, someone drop this in the back, and or the kids are getting something, I'll say, hey, I'll pull the seat up, don't worry. You know, I can move the seat up out the way. Um, also, the memory seats, so I can even set a memory on this side to all this angle to a preset. And I like to do that, especially for a car seat or some type. So I say, okay, this is the furthest it goes back. I know this is my setting. I can just press number two in, this, in that setting. All right. For rear, you can do rear controls. So if you're going to let people in the back seat, I can do, um, I can press this. And I can say, for example, I want the left seat to control. Press and hold this. And actually I put the left seat in, so now my seat, actually my, my driver's seat just went up a little bit. And what that did is just um, lets the person in the rear jump into the back, okay? Now, it moved my seat up, I guess you gotta be expecting that, but if I need to come back down, just press this back, and it will retract, and then your driver's seat should come back on its own. Here, There are different options. Obviously you have your light control, this is a fully automatic headlight, which means when I saw about fully automatic, the headlights will occupy automatically dusk and dawn when it's raining outside when wipers are on are low or automatic setting detects enough rain it will activate the headlights for you um, you have the parking lights here you have roadside marking here uh, headlight activation right there and the fog light right there all right Bring it off and then back to auto all right each time you turn the light on it gives you an indication lights are there Tell you the parking and the headlight is on. If I just go to parking, or if I go to fully headlight, if I go to fog light, you can see the fog light on that side, the indicator. And it tells you that the fog lights are on. Okay? Drive lights automatic. Um, cruise control, you can set your cruise here. Uh, activate the cruise mode, and then you can set your speed and then adjust your speed. If you have the driver assistance package, then you can do adaptive and you'll have adaptive setting. Limiter means that I don't want to cruise control but just limit me to my speed so I can say, okay, I can set it at 80, and at that point I can drive freely, and then when I hit 80, it feels like the car hits a governor, in a sense. Um, now, if, I, if I'm if i at 80 miles an hour, and if, or if I say like I said at 70, if I, that, that, you know, 70 is a good speed, but also I need to pass someone. Well, that limiter won't limit you and say, okay, you can't pass. It will let you override it if you put the pedal down to the floor. It will let you go beyond it because that's telling you maybe you're in danger, maybe you need to, get around something quickly um it allowed you to uh, go beyond but most of the time limiter is going to limit you speed so that way you don't feel so controlled where you can adjust it below the cruise control but also make sure you don't have a heavy foot and this car is probably something you wanted in I'll give you an example i was coming from the airport with this car and we're coming back from um from raleigh and i was heading back you know um to my destination and uh I just looked down and I was doing 90 miles an hour and I didn't realize it. My wife didn't realize it. And I think I was just keeping it, just kind of going to the flow, you know, in front of me. And I didn't realize that just, just the car just is super quiet. It's really smooth. And it's something that I don't, it's just it's something that it takes a minute to get used to. So if you don't know the car, it's easy to just kind of slowly creep up that speed. there. Um, you got a heated steering wheel. Um, you have heated seats here for driver passenger there's also a ventilated seat option and when you do the heated seats you can turn a heated armrest so just armrests are also heated okay obviously defroster controls air conditioning controls driver assistance controls you can do individual you can see till you can individualize so I can say okay what do I want that's on lane departure warning for collision warning you know I have those things that are on um, I could configure it individually I could have everything all on okay um, you can do your menu controls for your air conditioning. You can choose the air quality, automatic recirculation, so when it detects um, harmful fumes, smog, things like that, it'll go recirculation. Once the air cleans up, it will go to fresh air. If it's really hot outside, for example, the car is real hot in, inside, so your car is sitting outside all day, it will obviously re recirculate it first, and then once the air cools down outside, it will go back to automatic. And it does that without you knowing, so it's all working in the background. Um, heating and ventilation. 
you can do obviously control obviously the, the seats um, and then let's see here you can set different rules so what I say well, rules means um, let's say for example it is I can set below anytime that's below 40 mile, 40 degrees when I get into the car first thing turn on the heated seat turn on heated wheel right for example like that or if you have a ventilated seat option when it's above above a certain temperature I will want to activate the ventilated seat and you can set that up any way you want it you can have it on or off certain temperatures anything in between and that's just so you don't have to get into it and always have to press heated seat you know it's automatically on and once the car warms up it turns itself off there are different functions in here especially a car like the size um, the, it could they could park itself automatically so you have automated parking um, 360 camera which is nice you can turn the wheel this way you know you got the guidance lines guidance markers which helps um, you got your backup assistant backup assistant you wonder what that is that it traces your path automatically when I so for this for, for example um, we have it on an x3 I pull it into the garage I pulled hurt my wife's car into the garage that's actually is hers when I pulled the car into the garage I, I like to pull in close so I can open the doors on both sides. And she looked at it and she's like, how am I going to get that thing out of there? Because you pulled so close to the wall, the mirror, you know, she's worried about having to hit the mirror and things like that. And I said, don't worry. I said, use your backup assistant because if I didn't hit the mirror coming in, it won't hit the mirror coming out. It's going to pull the exact same path that I pulled in. So let's try it out. And to turn that on, the, the steering wheel took control and it steered itself and it followed the exact path of getting out of the garage without um, hitting anything as long as like I said if a car parked behind me I would say it's gonna hit that but it was perfect for her to get in and out of the garage especially when say, if I parked it too close to the wall and so she had to do some maneuvering to get it out it just backed itself out to where that path you still control the brake and accelerator pedal but you it, the steering is automatically controlled and you can see here it tells you how far the doors are at their max opening where the where they're gonna hit. So for example, here, it's gonna open just beyond that white line. So if I open the door, it should be just beyond that white line, which is exactly where it's telling me, All right? Um, obviously you get different camera views and then you have augmented reality. So you can see, then of course you put automatic, it'll tell you come down here you got your different modes sport mode now sport mode drops the suspension you can see it here that light that second light is coming on that's let me know the suspension is dropping to the next level uh, eco pro um, adaptive function which means it just sort of predicts your driving style it just sort of based on how you drive it's going to adjust it um, automatic hold so now we put that on when you stop it automatically turns on the automatic holds the brake pedal for you so think of it this way if you're in a drive through or some type you don't have to sit there and rest your foot in the brake the whole time you can be in drive so if I'm, I'm gonna drive and I'm gonna take my foot off the brake and it will not creep it'll just sit there bright lights be activated it'll hold itself and then to me to release it I just have to accelerate pedal and you'll see it release especially here in the car will start to move now say I can't move because I'm got something in front of me but just to give you an example when anytime you want it you can just go also, anytime you see the park mode with the auto hold on, it turns on the parking brake. You got hill descent control. Hill descent controls if you're going down a steep hill. Um, you want to control that speed. Instead of riding the brake, you can just hit that on. And think of a cruise control to not let the car roll too fast. So, I'm not saying we're off road, but if you were going down a, a, a off road or a grassy hill, it will control the speed. It'll control the ABS. Make sure you don't do anything there. Um, or if you're just, like I said, if I'm descending out of a steep parking garage or some, some type of hill, you can just set the speed and it'll automatically control it for you. Um, you do have a wireless phone charger here. Um, and then you have 12 volt outlet, which is being occupied by a radar detector right now. And then you have a USB-C, USB-A port actually. Uh, cup holder, heated and cooled cup holders are available in this car. And then, let's see, I think that's pretty much it for here. This is something new for me is the air suspension. So this, these lights are here tell the air suspension. This is sort of your lower height. This is only available when you're stopped. Helps when you get in and out of the car. So if I were to, let's say for example,
let's say for example, I, um, I'm in the lowest setting right now. Let's get out the car and take a look how it looks in here. And right away I can see because I'm stepping out and it's lower to the ground. And look how that looks. Be nice if you drive like that, huh? It goes to a lower setting when you're in a sport mode, but not that low. This is just for getting in and out. So let's do a quick walk around. Let's go to um, the highest setting. Door's gotta be closed for it to happen. It tells me that. So as I do it, it'll tell me also. So let's go up to, and you'll see it here. Let's go to the next one. It's pretty fast too. I had this on my Audi Q7, which was nice. So let's, um, I'm in the highest setting. This mode, these these two high modes are available for only for at lower speeds. So my, now my foot barely reaches getting out of here. Not as tall as I thought I was expecting, but I guess if I needed to clear an obstacle of some type, I could. If I need to run over this parking block, I could. Let's see here, we got the active grill shutters. So they're open right now, they're taking more air. So yeah, that, that definitely could uh, help there. I'm gonna go back to comfort mode. I'm gonna see where that, that position is. I'm gonna see if I can watch it from the outside as well. Okay, I'm gonna shut the door. Let's see if it drops. There it goes. That's, that's regular normal riding height. All right. If I go to sport mode. Sport mode, is it going to lower? It does lower itself. Sport mode is low enough. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So this is that sport mode right there. So let's do a quick walk around. I'll show you the lights. Fog lights. I'm gonna do this fast because it's about to rain. All right. So here's the headlights. Put the fog lights on. At nighttime, there's no mistaking that this is definitely BMW. Now it has the LED light. There is a laser, a laser light that's an option. And then the tail lights. Now the tail lights are going to be always on unless you turn off the daytime lights. Yeah, it still has that mean stance from the back. X5-like stance. I always think the X5s have that, that aggressive look. There's no exception here. Turn on the hazard lights. Put the indicators in the mirror as well.
Roadside lights are helpful when you're parking on the street. Um, you can turn on the parking lights on one side or the other side of the car. So, for example, if I'm parked on the, the right side of the street here, um, I can turn on the right, the left side lights. And then when I get out of the car, only the... So you see here, I'm parked. I got the left side, the roadside lights on. You can see here that only the left side is on. They're at a reduced rate. It saves battery. Um, and I just so the car stays visible at night. If I go back here to the back side, you should only see the tail lights on the left side. Maybe hard to see in the daylight. But you can see there, you can, yeah, I can see that it's on. The left side tail light is on, and then the right side is off. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the car. You'll see these real shutters close. And they're shut all right that'll change open and close depending on the needs especially when it's on the highway if it once it takes enough air it's going to shut itself for more aerodynamic needs if you're stopped like i said for example this parking lot is opening itself to, to suck in more air to the fans all right so let's go back here to the rear all right so come up top you have your um you have your um, garage controls. You have your sunshade here. You can close. So sunshade. I think this is for the rear. Yep. So that closes the rear, and then you have one that closes the main. Then you can open a sunroof. You can hit this, tilt it up, or you can slide it back. For a panoramic sunroof, I wish it. This is a little bit disappointing that this is all that opens up. This is all you get. This shit's fishing for the size. I'd, I'd rather have it half, half of the glass. So that's a little disappointing to see that. Um, get the reading light. I do like the Alcantara headliner. I do, I do, I can appreciate that. And then if I close the sunshade. Okay. So now I close the sunshade there. This is not Alcantara though. Two times. Open the hood. Let's take a look at this engine. This is your uh, B58 engine. It is a inline six, uh, 335 horsepower for this model. 300 and I think it's 30, I'm happy to torque, but it's, um, I think for this one, I prefer like a little more power, uh, especially considering that um, this is a big, heavy vehicle. Um, it, it, right now it is, is working um, for it, for example, if you're not like a power junkie or you don't need it, if you're not need the power, this engine would be fine, but um, I can feel it when it's like some climbing a hill, I know there's, it is downshifting a little bit more then I will probably with what's back with the V8. But the trade-off you get between the V8 and the six cylinder is this engine, um, like I said, it's 300, uh, 35 horsepower. It was a lot of, a lot of loss all of a sudden. The trade-off is going to be, um, you're gonna find that uh, the gas mileage is gonna be great on this one. So this one's going to be 19 in the city and then it's gonna be 24 in the highway, which is good for the all-wheel drive, the Alcamin all-wheel drive. The V8, on the other hand, you do get more power, so you get 523 horsepower, but this fuel mileage is going to be at, uh, one. I think it's at uh, 15 city, 21 on the highway. So highway, the, the city mileage is where it's going to, it's going to suffer. Uh, the the eight-cylinder is just going to, it's just this thirsty engine. Um, towing capacity is going to be the same on each car, no matter which engine you choose from. And then when you get the hitch, you lose out of the kick to open tailgate. So that's something to keep in mind. Now the 0 to 60, when I talk about the engines, this performance wise, 0 to 60 is 5.8 seconds, which is respectable. But when you compare it to the eight cylinder, 5.8, the, the V8 and 50i is 
4.5. So um, th that is a noticeable difference, especially the 60 miles an hour, where that V8 is going to be at least a full second ahead and in a continuing to accelerate. Um, but all this, like I said, it's all in your driving style. For me, I, I know what I like, but like I said, you, it, not everybody drives like I do. So, um, you know, pick what you, you know, obviously fit your budget and your needs and everything else. I don't think that this engine's bad. I don't think that this is a car is slow. I think anything usually in, in today's standards, as long as you have at least um, a seven second or, or faster vehicle, I think that's plenty for most people's needs. Seat controls are here. Um, you do have power, um, is it power? No, it's manual thigh extension. Uh, I want to say maybe it's, I think there's a seat upgrade here. I don't quote me. I haven't, but I think there's a seat upgrade, which gives you the power, gives you a little bit more settings in here to adjust, uh, raising this up and down, lowers the headrest, it's power headrest, um, basic controls, lumbar, you can raise and lower the lumbar, um, and then there's lumbar control right there. Tilt telescopic steering wheel. Um, you do have automatic high beam, and then you can cycle through different modes, such as the mileage or things you want to see. Uh, shift the drive, press this unlock, come back to drive. You can just go neutral, and then you can go over to sport mode, or all the way to reverse, and then press it for park. E brake, electronic. the right height settings right there and of course when I take all this out shut that center console you got USB-C port so I have this uh, little compartment here aluminum pedals the M Sport you got a cubby right here Harman Kardon sound system is standard. Bowers and Wilkins is an upgrade. All right, and of course here with the BMWs, always you get soft control, so I can assign these as shortcuts, not just preset for radio. I can, I can do preset radio if I like, but I can have a shortcut take me to a navigation uh, preference setting or radio preference setting or a typical screen or, for example, I. On my, on my BMWs, I like to set the profile. So I'll have one profile for me, I hit that. One profile for my wife, hit that. And these modes, um, what they do is they um, configure your ambient lighting, your seat heating, temperature in the car, um, music choice. It, it sort of can, you, you're seeing what basically how you're feeling and it, 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 it's gonna custom tailor to your mood. Um, so that is something else that we'll touch in there too. Uh, you have the driver quarter in here, this option. Um, these are just apps you have. Driver quarter is a cool feature. Think of it like uh, if, you have a, if you're familiar with Tesla's uh, sentry mode. Except it doesn't record when the car's parked. But for example, when you get to an accident, it can take the footage from the, from the past like a couple minutes and it uses the car's 360 cameras to record that footage and store it. Um, on that window, you know, certain places where you need to put your window down, for example, if you live in a gated uh, community, you need to punch in the code, you can have it set to where that window automatically drops when you get that location. If you're using the in-car navigation, you're gonna see that as well as far as lane guidance, they'll tell you exactly where you're going. If you're using the driver assistance package, for example, you're having that, it'll show you the car, show you the cars around you. Um, so it, it, it sort of custom tailors it. Glove box. Nicely damped in here. You do get all your, your different settings. You get experience modes, different tips, car carrying. You can get status information, check controls. So it says the third row seat and it's not locked down. I was playing with it, I need to lock that down. But on that, uh, it tells you all the health of the car is through this, this screen. Driver information, sport displays. Next view it tells you the picture of the car, what it's sitting at right now, right now in the lowest setting. Um, 
energy flow and you can see the battery this is a mild hybrid so by it being a mild hybrid means that when this engine does a start stop function you're not hearing it crank again it's not going to crank itself and you can hear that <clears throat> it's just going to just fire it back up uh, makes the start stop feature more seamless and tolerable um, because you're not you, you can barely feel the transitions if you're in sport mode that it doesn't do it but uh, that's the only way you can disable it there is no button to disable it because the the system is designed like a hybrid uh, and they said by a mild hybrid means that it can't fully propel itself on electric but what it can do is when it's slowing down to a stop sign it can um, turn itself off ahead of time and then we propel off the stop sign or stoplight and then when you're accelerating hard the electric bat the battery power can assist the gasoline engine all right let's check the turn is can i make you turn right here does it fine perfect so these are turn radius and let's hear the horn and here's how it looks from my point of view you got your turn by turn directions Showing up as a display. Turn right onto St. Henry Church Road. When you're in sport mode, you get the tachometer. Also, you get the M colors right here in the bottom next to the speed limit sign. So, the first thing when I get in here and I start driving, and I'm comparing this more towards the X5. The X3 because I've, I have more seat time in those. It's my first time with the X7. It feels big right away. You you feel the size. You feel um, like you're driving something large. You know, sort of the same feeling I got with the Range Rover. The feeling that I got when you drive a truck. Um, not necessarily a bad thing. It just it gives you sort of a you know anything that runs in front of me. Anybody that pulls out in front of me, or if I had to run over something. It's just going to tackle it, and this is not going to feel a single thing. Um, it's more of a sense of security that I get uh, with this. Now, this is the 40i engine. This is the, the six-cylinder B58. Um, if I were to buy one, I probably would just go ahead and get the M60 or the M50, depending on what year you're looking at. But I like it. Um, it is comfortable for a family hauler if you need the third row seating this is a good family hauler uh, right now I'm in a comfort mode and I think it drives pretty smooth um, it's floaty a little bit at some points but it's not to where I feel like the suspension needs to be recalibrated it's just sort of a comfortable like especially when you're on the highway it just it, it really absorbs the bumps and it tries to really cushion them it feels like you're just riding on a just a soft pillow um it has a display for a typical bmw if you're used to anything like the x5s or x3s a large has a display um i'm pretty um like i said no complaints there no complaints with the has a display or your uh, digital display or anything like that obviously it changes between the modes right now i'm in comfort mode and if i go to sport mode a few things happen um, sport mode obviously changes the damping and suspension, but also with the X7, you're going to get, sorry, I'm muting, you're, you're going to get a few different things that's going to happen, such as the air suspension is going to drop to a next level, so it's a bit lower. But even as a family hauler, and for someone like me, enthusiast who drives, I prefer the sport setting. Um, so you get a tachometer inside here, but what I like is it, um, it's not too harsh. And I like I said, I have the family in the car and asked Lexi and my wife I said hey what do you think of the ride now and normally she would be the first one to tell me it's too stiff or she would know right away I put it in sport mode and I put it in sport mode and didn't tell her I just see what she said you know about it and she didn't have she didn't notice so I said hey you know by the way I'm in sport mode what do you think of the ride and she's like actually it's not too bad so it'll be something that you know obviously I'm not going to expect to do any corner carving things like that with this but if you want just a little bit extra sporty ride um it know that it won't be too jarring for your family it'll be something that you could, you'll notice maybe no one else would notice too much so i'm gonna check these few corners here and it just so i'm not i'm not expecting anything sports car level um 
it's just well, it was even downshifting. So yeah, even the transmission is kind of getting ready for. I'm not even like accelerating hard. It's just doing what I guess the BMW thing that, that it does. So as I'm slowing down, it's, it's noticing I'm in the corners and it's starting to to kind of downshift itself, getting ready for that power coming out of the exit. As I tip it to the throttle, I can hear the turbo spool. Um, I, I, like I said, I prefer the V8. This is not a slow vehicle by any means. But a power junkie is going with the V8. I think anyone else will be perfectly fine with the six cylinder. It does a job well. Let's see how it does here. I'm just going to do a little acceleration. I'm going to put it in the sport transmission. And we're going to actually let's go left. I don't mind going left because that's uphill. Let's see what we got here. That's 60 miles an hour. A little bit over 60, but plenty of plenty of power for, for most people. I think especially for someone who's looking for a car like this, I'm not going to be need something that's like three three point something seconds zero to 60. Um, but it, it like I said, it nice sound to it, picks up well. Um, yeah, pretty. I'm, I'm happy with it. I think most people will too. Even the sound in the engine is not too loud coming in through the cabin. Just enough where you get a little character in it, but nothing that I feel like it's going to be overwhelming. Especially if you got kids living in the back and you need to pick up speed on the highway and you know, it's make everybody up. Especially if you're in yard in sport mode by accident. Um, let's put it comfort again. Actually, let's go to Eco Pro next. Let's try the Eco Pro. I like the Eco Pro is now I'm in neutral. It kind of goes that free roll setting where it just right now I'm down the hill, it just rolls. And I'm my foot's off the accelerator and it's just going to pick up speed on its own because I'm going down the hill. I don't want to touch anything. And you really save a lot of fuel with the Eco Pro mode. Eco Pro is also going to obviously dumb down the accelerator pedal, it's not going to be as sensitive. The steering wheel is a little bit looser. Um, and then you're gonna the climate control settings are gonna be reconfigured, and you can kind of individualize this too if you don't want it to be so efficient. But it's gonna recirculate more. It's going to the fan speed is gonna lower. It's gonna do a few different things here. So as you can see, it's, um, I would say it's exceptionally quiet in here. I usually have a conversation. Right now, I don't have any special microphones. There's, I'm using a relative GoPro mic, and I don't feel like that. I need to talk over anything, no road noise. Um, traveling 60, just under 60 miles an hour, and it seemed perfectly fine for me. Or anyone else. Um, this is a really good family car. Uh, I think personally for me, I don't need third row. So driving around with this extra space in the third row that I won't use very much, um, I just don't think it would fit uh, our needs just right now. Who knows, things could change later down the road. But the next seven would definitely be on my list. All right, let's do a kick down. Took me a little bit to close this gap with this car. Um, just probably the, again, the six cylinder sort of being 
this is probably where you'll notice more of what you had to V8 if you needed to pass someone because it's a lot of weight to get moving. Um, you got to decide how your driving style is and which one will work for you. But yeah, if you're not an aggressive driver, if you're not someone who's you know needs that power or wants that power, you'd probably be perfectly fine with the 40i. And it, like I said, it's enough. Um, but like I said, I wouldn't expect anything, especially the high, higher speeds if I needed to, to overtake someone. Just mean you gotta plan a little bit ahead and you know gain that speed if you're trying to pass someone on the back road. So this seating position, like I said, I feel just really comfortable. There's a lot of different settings in here. Um, long road trip, I think I have to, is there a wing headrooms? No, there's not. Um, but yeah, if I need to spend hours in this thing, family, this, this would be a, a great choice, someone to keep on your radar. Um, just rides super smooth. I'm just, I'm really impressed with how it rides. And you still get some of that BMW character in here, which is nice. There's heated seats, heated armrests, um, and like I said, there's a massage function that's offered. So if you want a massage while you're uh, driving on your long road trip, this this will be a vehicle. All right. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video of this X7, give me a thumbs up. I'm sorry, this is what not typical review. Um, first of all, I forgot my microphone, couldn't use the camera, so I'm using this on a GoPro. Um, but I hope the quality comes out well. And if you like what you see, like I said, give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Uh, the reason it does that is it sort of boosts the channel, boosts the video up more into the algorithm, so that way that more people will see it. Um, I think the overall X7 is a great family vehicle, luxury family vehicle. It has a lot of the luxury things you come to expect, but in a nice, comfortable package that seemed like a, the price point of these, um, depending on the engine you get, um, you can get these for just under $100,000. I'm gonna put the price of, obviously this is a used one. I think you can find a used one around the $65,000, $70,000 mark for the 40i. If you want a, the V8, the 50i, um, it's gonna be a little bit more money. I'm gonna leave the video off with a uh, nighttime view so you can see all the ambient lighting in here, all right? socket right here now from this point the cargo cover only extends from here to here it's not a big cargo area uh, uh, oh, oh man i thought i was getting stung by a bee